Well, there are plenty of challenges that, especially from the oil and energy sector. I'm talking about the sewerage lines, I'm talking about the water pipelines, and I'm very happy to tell you that even the Ministry of Law and Justice, number of these engineers throughout the country, and not only skill, but they should be possessing the skill certificate. So we are continuously working on those challenges. We are sorting them out. Talk about the smart cities for that matter. Well, there are plenty of challenges that uh, infrastructure construction industry is facing today. And uh, you have said it correctly that we are actually the change agent. It's almost 26, 27 years now that CIDC was incorporated. And this is a very unique organization in the sense that this is where the government and the industry, they work together. They are supported by the research and development institutions, educational institutions, policy makers, and number of experts in the business. Why infrastructure construction is important? The reason is that this sustains the economy of the nation and basically looks after the well-being of many of our citizens who otherwise cannot get the right kind of employment and engagement for that matter and this basically enables them to do a lot of constructive work which ultimately goes into improvement of the lifestyle of our citizens and nevertheless the most important point is that this basically is a kind of uh, engine for the growth and development of the national economy just think about it you do not have the automobile industry running in this country if you do not have as many highways and roads and who construct the highways and roads you do not have the kind of uh, metal manufacturing industry operating if we do not consume the steel zinc copper and many other materials that are there cement of course i'm not talking about because that's the prime material you have and i can tell you the endless list of the activities which basically are taken care of when we really give a spur to the infrastructure development. So we have been a change agent and there have been many challenges that the future has for us. As a matter of fact, during last uh, three decades, we have seen industry growing from a very placid kind of economic activity to a very vibrant activity. You'd be surprised to know that close to about 18% of the able-bodied citizens in the country they find direct employment with the construction industry. And I'm not talking about the indirect employment which comes because of the downstream and upstream activities that you have there. So we have been looking at the kind of processes, the systems, and I'm going to be telling you about many of these processes and systems, including the technological changes, which are very, very important for this industry to really start performing well and be on par at the international level and uh, provide to our people the kind of support that is expected to provide. You have a number of milestones that have been achieved now. Let me tell you when in 1996 the council was created by the planning commission and with the support of four of our core sector ministries uh, who are directly responsible for construction in the nation the scores of public sector undertaking, especially from the oil and energy sector. And of course, almost all the industry captains who run the construction industry today, there were four objectives. That was the first charter that was given to us. The first was that construction industry is basically driven and run by the people who generally do not have the benefit of formal education. Matter of fact, more than 90% of the persons who are working they do not have the benefit of any kind of formal education. So CIDC was interested with the responsibility of creating a national flagship program where the skilling becomes mandatory. The Even the normal workers are also imparted skills. And this is done in more than one ways. We have now number of training centers that have evolved over the years. We have number of associates who are actually working with us. And to top it all, we have the programs which span out to the construction project sites itself. So that is also where we go and start training people and make them acquire necessary skills that you have. Talking about the engineers, 
uh, supervisors and even the managers who are managing these projects they require timely and very very contemporary kind of working practices methods and cidc operates and trains number of these engineers throughout the country as a matter of fact we have an arrangement with all india council for technical education by which almost like about more than 3500 engineering colleges in the country they have made it mandatory now for their students to earn their degrees bachelor of technology in various disciplines they have to undergo an internship for 6 months program i'm very happy to tell you that cidc is actually uh, doing a large bit in there and close to almost about few uh, tens of thousands of students during last about 3 to 4 years time and even during the covid period they have been trained by us if you talk about the construction workers and the skill development that we have provided to people more than 52 trades are being taught to them and more than a million workers they have been trained over a period of time and number is ever rising for that matter let me also tell you another area where cidc had been working very very eagerly and we have been really pushing it this area is about change in the procurement system we have been working with the niti ayog earlier with the planning commission number of ministries for that matter to revamp their procurement conditions as a matter of fact this is the first time that apart from becoming a national flagship program many of the major project procurement organizations from within the government sector as well as from the private sector they have made it mandatory for their subcontractors or the service suppliers to have a certain percentage of the workers who should be holding proper valid skill certificates for that matter we have been talking with the indian bank association and there have been number of lending instruments that we have created which has facilitated ingress of institutional financing into the industry we have developed insurance products we have also created construction equipment bank so that easy availability of construction equipment is made available we have created a system of rating of construction entities so that their credit worthiness can be assessed by the banks for that matter and the banks keep they continue looking at it we create database for the construction industry and probably in the nation cidc is the only credible agency who has been able to give all kind of uh, data to all kind of sector sub sectors of the construction industry itself there are plenty of things that we have been working on and uh, i'll explain to you what are the kind of uh, projects on the anvil now and how we are basically taking them up further taking into account the kind of picture of future as to what our industry is going to be like in next about 3 to 4 to 5 years time so we are continuously working on those challenges we are sorting them out talk about the smart cities for that matter there are more than 100 smart cities that have to be commissioned and subsurface infrastructure is something which is extremely important i am talking about the sewerage lines i am talking about the water pipelines so cidc has been responsible in introducing trenchless technology in the functioning for that matter we have to have gis surveys we have to basically make sure that our municipal corporations they are in a position to enhance their revenue for that matter so we are working with few of the largest cities in the say, in the province of up where we are helping the local municipal corporation to update their revenue records for that matter and this is being done utilizing the gis services we have been teaching the students how to make use of the unmanned aerial vehicles which are the drones and how can they do the surveys and how can they basically detect the flaws and faults in the structure so there are plenty of things that are there i already told you that we have been working now for quarter of a century making it sure that both the consumers as well as the applicators they are fully aware that unless otherwise they have the skilled work persons and this skill is imparted to them they will not have the right kind of product available to the nation 
and uh, i am very happy to tell you the first major policy change that has been brought in number 1 is to make sure that a certain minimum percentage of construction work persons they are actually skilled and not only skilled but they should be possessing the skill certificate uh, the certificates are being provided by cidc only and i told you that over a million people have already benefited and more of them are coming the second major policy change that has come about disputes in construction contract is a very common place kind of a thing and this is a big menace that we have to get rid of so cidc has been responsible for creation of an organization called construction industry arbitration council this was incorporated about 14 years ago jointly with singapore international arbitration center and uh, the intent is that institutional arbitration must be inducted into our functioning and i am very happy to tell you that even the ministry of law and justice also has now very very seriously started looking at it matter of fact they have recognized ciac as one of the approved institutions who are supposed to be creating a cadre of arbitrators negotiators mediators and of course dispense of the kind of quick justice that is required there and let me also tell you it is very heartening that many of the major project organizations they have also made it mandatory that even the engineers who are employed by them they should be basically professional engineers there is a difference between a qualified engineer and a professional engineer again cidc has been responsible for creating engineering council of india which is the apex organization in granting the professional engineers certification based on the experience and the kind of practices which engineers have so there is a very very vast number of people who have started coming in and the next policy change that has been brought that apart from engaging the skilled workmen many of the organizations like central public works department they have made it mandatory now that certain percentage of engineers too have to be professional engineers so there are number of things that are happening and we are identifying the need that exists in the business and what exactly is the kind of future picture and based on that we design our activities past 30 years the total quantum of construction that we have done in this country i am talking about the entire infrastructure construction is close to almost 200 lakh crores this is a huge colossal sum of money which is about 40 times larger than the annual virgin construction work that we do in all the sectors put together may that be airports bridges industry or whatever you have there just imagine this kind of vast investment has been made and we don't have people who can look after the health of these structures therefore we are encouraging the construction chemical sector we are also encouraging the waterproofers as to they should also get their people skilled right kind of technology must be brought in and with that we are also talking about diagnostic how exactly the diagnostic techniques can be given to engineers so that they know the exact health of the structure for that matter there are two segments that we have picked up now one is the buildings and second is the roads and bridges these are the two segments of course this will follow and we'll take up industry also very soon because the fundamentals are the same but unless otherwise you have a doctor who can diagnose the disease how will you have a doctor who is going to be basically prescribing some kind of a treatment to you so simultaneously the stage is now set for looking for people who can do the right kind of retrofitting right kind of management of the structure and things like that after all you must imagine with this kind of vast investment that has been made in the nation we can't allow it to go down the drain very quickly so these are the kind of things that we are doing and i think the results are very very heartening i told you about uh, the results being very satisfying and we are in a position to really predict the future also we know what exactly is going to be following now as the time is passing by we have to understand 
that the number of people who used to be the conventional workers utilizing the conventional technologies that is going to go down and now we have to start moving towards new kind of materials and matter of fact we have been talking with the steel industry and taking on with them a kind of uh, mission by which we are going to be enhancing the consumption of metals there are three or four major advantages when you use the metals number one they are far more recyclable which means that the kind of net carbon footprints they go down like anything and that is something where we are basically trying to work with ministry of environment and forest also and very recently we have published a report where we have given the path for implementation now how exactly are we going to go one of the major findings of that uh, report is that industry has to be fully i would not use the word educated but they have to be made conscious of the kind of things that we are we are doing now and as per the montreal protocol that has been signed we now have to start looking at the kind of new vistas for that matter and we have to see that how best we can transform our working so there will be more of mechanized working there will be more of metal utilization as i told you about the construction chemicals we need to have more uh, construction chemicals which can make the whole product far more efficient for that matter and far more workable so these are the kind of things that we have to be uh, continuously looking at now the first major step is now we have to shift from in situ construction to pre engineered prefabricated construction that is something that we have to understand it helps us in more than one ways number one the kind of quality parameters that you can create within the factory within the manufacturing place cannot be compared with the what you do at the sites as a matter of fact you would have seen that there are many visible changes now you will see that entire components you look at the metro rail that you have there the whole span the columns they are being now created in the factory and they are being assembled at the site for that matter but to do that you require people with special skill how can they join these uh, mechano pieces that is something which is very important you also require lot of specialized equipment how exactly do you put it in position after all we keep on hearing the news that in china or in some place they did some 100 story building in 6 months time or 4 months time or 5 months time and for us it might take almost like about 4 years or 5 years they are doing it because much of the construction is factory made is pre engineered pre fabricated and that is what basically is another area that we are focusing on that is a technology that has to be going there we also have to look at the kind of facades that we are creating now of course india is a very Uh, lucky country i would say we have so many agro climatic zone and geo zones for that matter in this nation we have deserts and we have the mighty mountains uh, we have rivers and we have humid atmosphere and we have arid atmosphere and things like that and we have forests so we also have to see that what exactly is the impact of the kind of surroundings on the structure that we create once again i drift back to the same thing that we have to make choice of the smart materials we have to make choice of the right kind of technology and we also have to have right kind of implements to execute that and then of course most importantly we also have to see that the customer gets the value for money this customer can be private sector customer this can be the government or the people of this country this customer can be any industrialist for that matter so we are supposed to be playing a very important role in making sure that every penny that is spent into this business is spent properly well and there are guarantees ascribed to that after all when you look at the kind of old international uh, conglomerates for that matter you see one thing which is very very uh, common amongst all these people that they all swear by the hallmark of all when you speak about rolls royce or bentleys or you talk about some of the major names that you have there it is because over the period of time 
they have developed the systems uh, they are not 100% full proof but they are full of the assurance that basically the producer or the manufacturer gives to the customer that's a kind of a trust and relationship that we have